All right, here we go. We've got the gear pressed onto the new cam. There's the old cam after we've pressed the gear off of it. Or make sure you get that keyway out and your retainer. And then we'll also be putting in the new lifters. So we're going to use magnets on these lifters to get them in there and hold them. Wish me luck. I think we're going to need it. So we got the cam and the lifters in. I ain't going to tell you how I got the lifters in, but let me tell you this. I believe the guys at Hamilton think that these are only going in engines that are removed from the frame and you can turn them upside down. All normal tools to hold lifters in place don't work, but we got it in there. I know you can't tell. You can by the threads inside of that inside of that camshaft. Anyway, now I can start doing some other stuff. We're going to do the ARP head studs. We're going to do the fleece the fleece the fleece, the fleece coolant bypass and you know, start putting this thing back together. I'll start I'll show you some little videos in between here and there, okay? All right. So, one of the other important things that we're doing on this to give it the old bulletproof is this here bulletproof diesel water pump. If you notice, those are all machined billet. They also have a much more improved bearing inside of here. So we're going to get this thing installed in right there. There's the bulletproof diesel water pump. Be going back together with the rest of the front of this motor. And then we'll continue adding more goodies. Alrighty, ARP head studs are all in. Now I'll just get the rockers and the push rods in, set the lash get the girdle, get it trimmed, and get it all put in, the, get the top end of this motor sealed up, and then we'll move on to some more fun stuff, right? So we got all of the rockers, push rods back in, got the valve lash set. Now we are going to trim up the girdle and get the rest of the top end put together. I'll show you here in just a second on where you gotta trim that girdle at, okay? Okay, so the instructions for the ARP studs tell you to trim around the number 24 bolt hole. So you can see right there that there is interference. So you have to hog out some of this piece right here, okay? I'll get that hogged out and then I'll show you what it looks like afterwards. So that's after trimming. You can see that it clears the washer and the nut. You gotta make sure that you take out just enough to clear that washer. If you don't, you'll end up with an oil leak on the back side of this. Very important. Okay guys, now it's time to put in the fleece coolant bypass. It is going to go behind that cover. And there's a freeze plug in the back of the head. So I'll get that cover removed. I'll get the freeze plug out, get everything clean. You have to have them surfaces extremely clean before you bolt on the coolant bypass kit. And there's with the fleece fuel filter housing delete. Still allows for the return fuel flow. You can see this return line coming up into the fleece adapter and from your injection pump into it. It's a really cool setup, highly recommended. There she is, that's the fleece cheetah. Look at that baby in there. It spins nice and freely. I love this thing. It is a direct drop in. Nothing special, nothing obscure. Way better improvement over the factory turbo, that's for sure. If you guys don't know about the fleeces, you need to hop online and check them out, the fleece cheetah. We got the cab back down. The Hamilton cam is in, turbo's in, all of that stuff. You, you know, piece by piece videos that we've done. So now we've got the truck back up in the air because we are installing the FAST. So first thing you got to do, of course, is run the wiring, which I did. It's hanging. Second thing you got to do is pull down the fuel tank. There's the fuel tank. You got to remove the pump and then you got to do some massaging to it. So here is the pump with the new pickup tube return line. And then here's a whole bunch of pieces of stuff that we got to put back into the truck. There's pieces of the old pump there on the ground anyway we're going to go ahead and get all of this put back in get the pump mounted up in there 
and then start running the rest of this stuff so check back here in a little bit and i'll show you what it looks like when it's done so we've got the fast in and we have the ats bypass in there's that beautiful little fella right there come back here to the fast there's your fast fully installed just started the truck up pressure check for leaks no leaks found so this thing is ready to go so we're gonna start this off with we're gonna introduce you know the, this bulletproofing program that you've heard me talk about we've done a couple teaser videos about it this video is kind of like my dream list video of stuff that I would do on your you know fifth gen Cummins to make it to where this thing's gonna last you three four hundred thousand miles um, we could call it a stage two we could call it a stage three I think by adding the turbo it kind of makes it a stage three just because you know, that's that's another big piece of the puzzle that we have to get in there now we I've had a ton of questions about what would be the bare minimum that I would do and the bare minimum is of course the Hamilton cam swap you've got to get that factory hydraulic roller lifter cam out of there you got to go back to a solid flat tap and camshaft that is the minimum but while we got the cab up in the air to do that you've got to also do that fleece bypass we've said it once i'll say it again high mileage cummins when we tear them down we always see heat damage to cylinders five and six so it's because the coolant flow through the block is terrible and i mean everything else about the engine is phenomenal except for the coolant flow so got to get to that that coolant bypass kit just to keep the back half of the engine cool too and then also while we have that up there you're going to do the fast system because the fuel system is a very expensive part of the engine and we want to protect that as much as we can so we got to put a fast i like the titanium series unless you're doing you know higher horsepower applications you don't need to put a some style in so the titanium series is perfect for this you have to modify the existing fuel pump housing but you're not cutting a big hole in the bottom of your tank so with that then we're going to do the fleece engine mounted fuel filter delete kit and that's a pretty cheap thing it's real easy to get to especially with the cab off so those are kind of the very basics that i would do if i was doing a like a stage one bulletproofing now i have chatted with the guys over at insane diesel and i've researched their product i love that oil bypass system it's probably going to be the number one biggest thing you can do from a maintenance aspect to get that engine to last longer clean oil through the engine is you know <laughs> a no-brainer you got to get that that oil filtrated all the way back down to the super less than one micron point that they're doing with that plus it circulates i think at like 150 gallons an hour so you're doing a very aggressive filtration on it but it's not interrupting the full lubrication system of the engine anyway enough about that we get up into you know the other stages where you're going to do your arp head studs and then you're going to do your turbo and then so on and so forth if you want to do a catch can do a catch can if you've already got the weight loss program on there then let's go with the ccv delete so on and so forth these are some of those you got to be careful you're walking that fine line of being you know, being epa legal or not but if they come to me and they're already deleted i can still work on them but a few of the very key components that we're putting into these is parts that are from trusted companies so i recommend arp because i have seen an a, extremely high failure rate on other companies head studs ARP I've not seen a failure rate on those at all and this is personal experience mind you some of you guys might have seen ARP head studs fail maybe they got put in wrong who knows um, fleece is a very reputable company have not had a problem with them at all none of their products never had a failure one out of them and same with the banks i have personally not had any failure rate out of any banks products at all and i've installed a lot um, the other thing about like insane diesel versus the ams oil insane diesel is a local company here in utah and i am going to support local american-made businesses before i support global conglomerates any day of the week 
that's enough said on that. A few of the other components, the bulletproof diesel water pump. Again, it's an American made company doing American made stuff for Americans in America. Do I need to explain that e anymore? I'm not gonna go with companies that source all of their crap out of Pakistan or wherever in the hell they get it from. I'm gonna support everything that I can for local economy. Local being either Utah or United States. I don't care as long as it's American. Enough on that pro that topic, right? So a couple of the other big things that we've talked about and you've seen me do other videos on it is your oil and your filters, your fuel filters, your engine oil filter, all of that. You know, it's it's a learning process no matter what we do. I'm still finding factory oil filters or fuel filters that are wrong for the engine they're cheap they're knockoffs but they're branded mopar and we're, we're going to throw this back on the stellanis because i've had several conversations with my depart my parts department they're not ordering them off of amazon they are putting the order in and this is what stellantis is shipping us so we're going to throw that back on them i don't know where they're sourcing their stuff at but some of it's fake and so be it and then there's another company that um, has been throwing their name out on social media a lot. And I'm going to just say their boxes are red and the name of it rhymes with block. Right. I had to change out a set of their filters just last night because we had a drivability problem from a engine mounted fuel filter that clearly after I inspected it closer was the same problem that we're having with the fake brand Graham filters so I'm gonna be switching all of my filters and going straight to Geno's garage have not had a problem with them at all but the oil I'm you know every manufacturer you can go to AutoZone and you can pull their AutoZone oil off of it and it'll say safe for Cummins or safe for whatever that's all great Rotella does the same thing safe for Cummins safe for Ford it doesn't matter but what none of them have is their name on the front of the bottle, like Valvoline Blue. They have a 540, and they also have a 1540, they also have a 1030. They have many other weights, but we're talking about specifically for Cummins. Whether you're in a warm climate, a hot, a cold climate, whether you're flat tap it, or whether you're still roller cam. There's a lot of debate on what is the best oil for these engines, but... Cummins puts their name on the front of the Valvoline bottles and that's what I'm going to switch everybody that I know of over to is the Valvoline and get rid of that T6 Rotella. I've never liked Rotella. I did oil field for 22 years and a lot of our heavy equipment we ran Rotella and because we ran it in our big equipment we also ran it in our company trucks and I absolutely hate it. Anyway enough on that topic. So we're going to blend this all back to you know the stage one stage two stage three bulletproof proofing programs it's all about how much money you want to spend to get the longest life that you can out of your cummins engine we can go as deep as you know turbos and everything else and this is all short of tearing the engine out and apart and putting speed of air pistons and fire rings and all of that stuff on there we're we're not getting that aggressive we're looking at stock format engines you know people that are not wanting to roll coal not wanting to pull you know that dealership building down the street but people who just want their engines to last longer so there's where my list comes from it's a practical all day value saving list some of the components on the list show up just because it's cheaper to do it with the cab off and I'm all about trying to get the best value out of your money. If we have the cab off to do the Hamilton swap, you better save yourself an extra three hours worth of labor and do the fleece coolant bypass at the same time. It's a no-brainer. There's just several things that we have overlapping labor. We're gonna save that when we put the cab, pull the cab off, and that's why those are on the list. Yes, they can be done later on, and if your budget doesn't allow it, they can be done later on but it's going to cost a little bit more in labor because it's a little bit harder to get to when the cab is back on the chassis so 
if there's ever any questions about how far or how deep that you want to go into doing a bulletproofing program on your vehicle the biggest thing you need to ask yourself is how much you want to spend on it you know labor is not cheap and the parts you know they're not cheap either i'm going to do everything that i can to save my customers as much money as i can not only for now but for the long term again how much money do you want to spend right now so if you have any questions just email me and if you want to get my email send me a comment and you know if it's a it's a good topic and somebody's genuinely interested in this i am going to respond as much as i can i spend at least two hours every night trying to get back to messages and respond back to valid questions and comments now if you're just throwing out their old bank sucks then yeah i'm not going to comment on you like that but again have any questions submit it in the, the comments or if you can find one of them that has my email which I'm not I'm not afraid to say it out there so just find it you'll see it pretty easily I think it's even in my profile but that's where we're at on these you know different stages of the bulletproofing program and uh, yeah want to thank everybody out there for all of the interest in it I get probably 20 emails a day of people wanting questions answered on the bulletproofing process banks products so on and so forth and uh yeah on a little teaser for you banks is doing some severe testing right now and that's all i'm going to say except for it's going to throw a lot of the theories about these trucks not starting in cold weather because of the banks monster ram out the window videos to come shortly anyway Thanks for watching, thanks for tuning in, like, comment, share, all of that good stuff, and we'll talk to you guys on the next one.